Hi there, my name is Rice. I'm in my mid-20s and around seven years ago, I made the life-altering decision that pre-med just wasn't for me. I was incredibly scared because so much of my life had revolved solely around the fact that I was going to become a doctor. I was lost and had no idea what I wanted to do, which was a very foreign feeling because I pride myself with my excellent sense of direction. Today, I wanted to explain my understanding of the life science industry as well as some alternative careers you can consider because contrary to popular belief, just because you like science doesn't mean you have to be a doctor. So personally, I'd say there are three big umbrellas, more or less, that most life science jobs fall under. Number one is industry, so that's inclusive of pharma, medical device, suppliers, contract orgs such as CROs, CDMOs, CRDMOs, etc. Number two, there's consulting, and number three, there's healthcare. Today, I'm not going to really go into healthcare because that's a story for another time. One of my favorite eye creams I've been using re recently by Shy Shy Shy. Um, it's kind of like a serum under eye concealer. Um, but before I begin with the actual video, I wanted to give a quick disclaimer. I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your life or what you should be or anything like that, but I know for me personally, I was quite lost and I had no idea what to do, so I kind of wanted to just share some insights about the life science industry as a whole, and obviously I'm not going to be able to cover every single profession there is out there. just want to give you guys some food for thought and just additional avenues you can explore for your own career development. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. When it comes to consulting, there are two routes. You can go to the big dogs, so that's BCG, McKinsey, Deloitte, etc. Or you can go the boutique route where the firms are smaller and specialize in the life sciences. This is mostly speculation as I've never worked in consulting before, but I would say the barrier to entry is higher at the fancy firms unless you're going in straight out of college. If you're interested in consulting, start preparing for case studies now. Go on YouTube, there's a ton of videos with sample interviews, and long term, most consultants either go into industry or VCs post consulting. If you stay a consultant long term, the career trajectory will look something like this. I don't know much about consulting beyond this, but the partner salary definitely looks pretty juicy. When deciding, I really encourage you to think about the lifestyle you want to live. Do you enjoy talking to people and traveling? If not, consulting might drain your energy. I went on my first business trip recently, and honestly, if I had to travel just twice a month, I think I would just be done after a year. I don't think my body is built for consulting, which is why I personally went straight into industry. Now let's dig a little deeper into the pharmaceutical industry. The whole commercial process of the pharma industry can be roughly summarized by this infographic. The earlier you are in the chart, the closer you will be to the science. Before phase one to three, we have drug discovery, where the actual molecules are discovered and synthesized by scientists. If you're interested in lab work, this is a pretty good place to start. The average pharmaceutical scientist makes between 96K and 120K in California. Phase one to three constitutes clinical trials. In terms of entry-level jobs, you can be a CRA, which stands for Clinical Research Associate. And what you're doing is essentially helping to manage clinical trials. These roles are slightly more involved in the healthcare side where you might interact with patients or physicians. So it might be a good option for those of you who like healthcare, but don't wanna be in healthcare directly. The average salary of a CRA in California will put you at roughly 102K per year. The BLA slash NDA steps are involved in the regulatory side of the industry, which is where the proposal, regulatory, and legal team comes in. I personally find the idea of putting together legal and regulatory documents to be extremely boring. This also can tie into quality assurance. I'll leave some keywords to search for when finding these jobs site here. Launch represents the commercial segment of the business, so that includes everything from marketing, operations, project managers, portfolio managers, sales, BD, etc. In my personal experience, I feel like the entry-level positions that are easiest to break into are marketing and sales or BD. Especially if you start in sales, it's fairly common to then branch out into other commercial functions as your career progresses. I'm finally home from my business trip. 
I'm getting ready to head out soon, but before I did, I wanted to kind of show you guys some of the things I picked up from yesterday that like absolutely changed my life. Summer's almost here. I got another Estera cream. I already went through my first bottle. This is amazing. If you have acne, highly recommend this. And I also got a mini mandelic water. I actually use this for my body, so like my arms, legs, if you want, your skin to be soft. A new skirt! I'm excited to wear this. A new top for summer. This top is also new. I think it's super cute. This is in the front, but party in the back. For the past few years, I've been involved in the commercial side of the science industry. I love science, but I also love the human-to-human -human interaction despite being an introvert. Fast forward a few years, here I am in commercial operations. I've always been a free-spirited individual and I love how there's so much to learn. Operation revolves around data, so I'm looking forward to learning more about SQL and other data analytics tools. Today is a momentous occasion. I've been wanting to get a rug for a really long time and we finally got one. A question I've been getting recently is, is the biotechnology industry a good industry to go into? And my answer to that is that the compound annual growth rate of the biotechnology industry is at 29%. The market as a whole is expected to grow quite aggressively from now until 2030. Some emerging trends in the life science industry include the increased use of AI and machine learning, personalized medicine, advancements in gene editing tech like CRISPR, growing adoption of telemedicine, and an increased focus on preventative healthcare. There are so many different facets of biotechnology industry to explore, and according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the demand for qualified biotech professionals are not too bad. If there's anything I missed, please leave a comment and share your wisdom with the rest of us. The industry is so incredibly vast that I would love to fill in the gaps of my knowledge and learn more. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!